have been to you, having the title, having a promoter with a big checkbook, and not being able to get those big fights? Listen, I wanted to go up to 168, fight Billy Joe, Joe Gasson. <laughs> God, let them sleep in their best pajamas. Nightmares of me winning is the best of commas, boy. Boy. He hasn't come up against the likes of me yet. I haven't come up against the likes of him yet. Um, we have been working for a long time now since this kind of started growing, this conversation about this fight. We've been in the gym working and uh, training towards beating Andrade come fight night. And uh, look, and I remember, you know, watching the World Championships and everything, and I was watching Andrade and... Uh, in the World Championships in Chicago and seen him going on won the gold medal there. And I was very impressed by him. And uh, here I am now challenging him for the world title myself. anybody in this game especially when they're you know getting in the ring with me because like I am a stepping stone to their career to change their career in their life so and I got a lot more to look forward to and a lot more to you know gain so um, every day is a real day I look at him like this is a million a hundred million dollar fight this is a hundred million dollar fight to get me to the hundred million dollar fight so you know I don't overlook nobody Look, every it doesn't matter how great of a fighter you are, Canelo, Golovkin, Floyd Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, they all had weaknesses, you yeah. know. And um, yes, we've we've studied we've studied Andrade, and you know he definitely does have a few weaknesses. He's very wild and reckless, um, you know. He doesn't really throws his head a lot, you know. He's he's a little bit all over the place and out of sorts at times. I think he tires. A lot in fights as well. Uh, his engine doesn't seem to be great. Jason, Jason, quickly on the 19th. What can you tell us about him first? I mean, look, he's a he was a, a island Olympian, so 19 and one, and he was, was a candidate to fight Canelo at one point. So for me to step in a ring with somebody, they have to be somewhat good. And for Canelo to have him as a candidate, he must be. Pretty good, or it could be a horrible fighter. Either way, come November 19, we're gonna do what we're gonna do, and that's make quick work out of quickly. Question so much about why champs avoid you, and that's that's always a question we always ask, and we always expect, expect an answer for. But I, I guess instead, the question is, why do you think that you deserve these fights now? Why do you think you know you are ready for those fights? I mean, why did? The Yerdum kid get the opportunity. Why did Colin Smith get the opportunity? Why did Rocky Fielding get the opportunity? Why did anybody, all these other people get the opportunity? What's the difference between between them and I, my, myself? What did they do to get it? And if the answer is, oh, that they are a champion, I've been that in two weight classes. So what's really, what's, what's I don't know. <laughs> like, what else is there to say? Other than the end of the day, it's gonna be a real fight. It's gonna be a real fight. And I'm slick enough, I got I got skills, and the one thing about me is like, I'm going to adjust and I'm going to figure out and give you different styles every single round if I need to. These other guys are all doing the same thing, so it's easy pickings. And it's, and, and whatever, but you know, I, we, you want me to talk about Chalo? You want me to talk about Triple G? You want me to talk about why Triple G not wanting to make the fight? You want to go all the way to Japan to fight Murata for what? 
How is that, what excitement does that bring to boxing when you have Demetrius Andre? Chalo, what excitement does that bring to boxing when you have Demetrius Andre? Canelo, what excitement does that have when you have Demetrius Andre? But understand the business. We got four European guys that has no power, that can, that like, is not in the best shape of their life. And I can win in one year becomes, yo, at the end of the day, I'm I'm happy for Canelo. Like, it's like, it's the incredible part of that situation is that to, for him to have the power to say, I want to fight every champion in one year. I can't do that. Nobody else can do that but Canelo. So that's the incredible part. And he did it at the, the right weight class. Did he fight the best in that weight class? Let's just be honest. The answer is no. Andre. Yeah, when that guy's uh, when that guy wins a world title, all right, wins a world title. Oh yeah, he don't sell any tickets, sells out Providence. Ah oh, yeah, um, he's not making any money, making a lot of money. Like they've already said, they'll only fight guys in the PBC. So that tells you everything you need to know. But just speaking of speaking, you know, as we talk about in house with Demetrius, what have you thought, Eddie, when people are saying, you know? Stop banging the drum for Andre Charlo and get him the fights that, that are maybe more realistic on his own with Mungia and with Golovkin. But, but, but they're not in-house fights. They're in-network fights. I can't. I don't represent those fighters. And if I did, I'll be telling them, you got to fight Demetrius Andre. Because I can't say to Golden Boy, look, you have to. And listen, the zone would love to see Mungia against Andre or Golovkin against Andre. But, you know, Jaime Mungia, when he moved up to middleweight, was told by the WBO, you're mandatory to Demetrius Andre. He said, no, thank you. Just leave me, just leave me alone for a minute, right? Well, Demetrius, we go again. November 19th, you're back in action defending your WBO world middleweight title. Just how happy are you to be back in the ring and also just down the road in New Hampshire? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited, you know, mm -hmm. especially, you know, boxing's back in full force. Fans are being in the stadium and it stands out. And so um, we're still in, you know, my hometown region in New Hampshire, Manchester, New Hampshire. It's gonna be a, a fun event. And we're gonna like, you know, bring championship boxing to a state that never had championship boxing before. And so, you know, I'm just excited to get back in the ring and show people what I made of. There's not one bad seat in here. Let's go take a look at the, some of these dressing rooms. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go like, like, yeah, I want this one. Yeah, we're here. A lot too. Visitors locker room. Locker room too. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely just, <laughs> definitely just start off with some of that. Home locker room. Okay. Home locker room. Black door, huh? Yeah, all these things. This must be it right here. This That's big. the lodge. Mm. That's where the goods are at. Uh, That's where the goods are at. That's probably the press conference. Cause Stone Cold Steve versus sister. Beer! Beer! That's what, that's what we need to do. For real. After that, I'm going to be like this. I throw beers in the can do that. We can do that. For real. Don't we do it. All you hear is. We're bringing a few cans. Then all of a sudden, Vada hits us with, oh, that's a performance answer. You're like, really? I'm fucking there? Now, nah, fight's couple, over. Couple, uh, I'll put a couple in my bag under the rest. Yeah. I'm like, hey, all, all we could get, like, some salsa water, and we just raffle with the bear, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I don't know who's the bear, who's the, who they use the anyway? Bear? No, no, what they use anyway, the zone. Um, the bear sponsor. Yeah, don't they got one? Okay. Is it cause for this? I don't know. Yeah. Well, cause? Yeah, throw me some cause, baby. Put them, put them right under the ring. 
Yeah. Corner post? Yeah. We do it. Hell yeah. 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 Keep them coming. In the hell with a beer, I'm gonna be mad. Keep them coming. That's the idea. Hey, <laughs> you better go to each thing. Each corner. Stand up on the thing and do it like uh, this. You know what I'm saying? Go back to the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta we gotta put that in our playlist for um <laughs> for the DJ. Right, yeah. I'm gonna tell Rooney too. Right? Is that right? Craig. Beatrice, welcome. Yeah. Glad to have you here. My precious friend. Love you. It's so good to see you. Sure. Oh, yeah. Good to be there. Yeah. So happy. I got you uh, physical yesterday. You're healthier than I am. <laughs> you know, you know. You know, got to stay that way. You and I have been friends a long time. Very Remember? long. Very long. I signed your first oh, pro yeah. license. Oh, yeah. I'm just telling them right now. Did you? Yeah. Hey there. Oh, yeah. This is a man. You know, I don't have to wish you good luck. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. I love thank you. you. Thank you. I love you too, man. Yep. Appreciate you. I'll be with you, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yep. Definitely. I got to go up and have a talk with those people. Okay. Good thing. I'll be right here. God bless you. All right, thank you. Give my your daughter a precious hug for me. Yeah, I got you. How old is she now? Um, 15, 10, 11, 7, and 1. Is she really? I, I saw her in your arms at one of the fights. I was going to go over there and see if I could hug her, but for some reason I didn't. Yeah, yeah. They'll be here next week, so we'll Good. make sure they come see you. So happy right. to see oh, you. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. God bless you, darling. Right, yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. You know, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but hey, I've been, we've been around for since the amateurs. You know what my boy Ed said? He said, man. Even white people like you. <laughs> he's like, this is something about you, kid. As soon as I get around you, he's like, it's crazy. He's white people. I'm like, now white people in my audience and shit. Like, oh, shit, there's white people around here. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out there at Centipede Lake and all that stuff like that. But yeah. Child Sound's like small, quiet. Yeah. Not really much out there. That's why you like it? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's where kind of like my... <clears throat> My other family like was based oh, yeah, on family there. Yeah, yeah, so that's nice. when I um nice. you know started making my residence and then just oh, let's go back and forth to Providence. So we can call you a New Hampshire resident. Yeah, for sure. You ready? Yeah, John? Ten years. I'm ready. Whatever you gentlemen are ready. All right, so you got this fight coming up with, with Quigley. Um what uh, what should we expect in this one? Uh, missing, um, I'm missing I'm a two thousand and eight Olympian. Yeah. Um Quigley's also Olympian Olympian from the island. And so we should get a good pedigree, you know, between both of us. It's going to be a, a, a great fight, I believe. You know, I made the best man win, of course, and that is me. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be a great show, and especially for, you know, New Hampshire. How are things going for you coming out of COVID? You haven't been able to fight as much, right, because of COVID. Are you guys getting back up to speed with normal scheduling now? Yeah, this is going to be my second fight this year. Um, my last fight was April down in um, Miami, Florida, and that was a good turnout. But it was... Um, Restricted to fans, but now, and you know, live or die, you know what I'm saying? Live free or die, you know? We're gonna be out here, we're gonna turn the roof off and everybody be out here cheering, so can't wait. Awesome. So you're already um, champion of the WBO. What, what other goals do you have? Where are you trying to get to? Yeah, pretty much, you know, it's undisputed. Fight for the other remaining belts out there, meaning the other champions. So you have the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, and I have the WBO. So, you know, that's a that's a, a major goal. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our, our mayor, you Mayor Joyce Craig. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's great to have you here. Oh, yeah, for it's sure. Really exciting. Oh, yeah, for sure. We can't wait to get out here and, you know. Make it happen. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. I yeah. fought here many years ago, twice. Oh yeah. Yeah, many years ago. Um, How many like, years? Like you maybe like, like ten. You many years in you. <laughs> oh, I've been, yeah, I've been fighting for like twenty something wow. years, but um, it was a. Uh, Fight to educate? Uh, yeah, 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 fight, yeah, fight, yeah, yeah, fight, yeah, 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 fight, yeah, yeah, Ronnie Steve, nice. yeah, four here twice on, um, with him, so, Good. it was great.
Glad to have you back. Yeah, now it's going to be a bigger, bigger thing. Too. Yeah. Much bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But well, welcome back. Yeah, for sure. You know, just the hard work let us back here. So. Yeah, good. Yeah, we was glad this thing was open, too. Yes. 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 You know? Tim's worked hard. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're happy uh, yeah. that the doors are open again and people are coming back. And, no, for uh, sure. We're, we're extremely appreciative of having an event of this caliber oh, take yeah. place as one of the first events that we're having. Oh, yeah. Three title shots, too. Yeah. That's, 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 that's big. Fantastic. You know? So it's going to be a good night. Eh, bueno, Demetrio, ¿cómo estás? Mi primera pregunta es, ¿cómo te sentís para tu próxima pelea contra Jason Quigley? First question is, how are you and how do you feel for your next fight against Jason Quigley? Um, I'm good. I feel great. You know, ready, to, ready, and you know, excited to get back in the ring. And um, you know, with Jason Quigley, you know, he um, is a man who you know was is willing and able to say I want to fight Demetrius Andrade after he, you know, um, beat Sugar Shane Mosley Jr. And so now we're making it happen. So, you know, he's one of many that are not screaming I want to fight Demetrius Andrade. So um, come November 19th, definitely going to be a show. A few people want to fight you. Let's stick on that subject. And why? Why is it that Triple G wants to fight Murata? Why does it that Charlo wants to fight Triple G and not you? Can you speak in regard to that? And is, has there been anything that Eddie Hearn has told you with regard to that? I mean, I can only speak and control whatever Demetrius Andre does. And, you know, with Eddie Hearn trying to um, push these other fighters and give them, you know, um, the deals that they're looking for and then entice them, of course, with... with I mean, more money to make the things happen. But um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, um, fighting me is, you know, worth the reward and, and everything that comes with it. So I don't understand why these guys are uh, not taking the step up to make this, these fights and unifications happen. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you know, but um, Hami Mungi have been my mandatory for, I don't know, about the last year or two and he kept passing it on and so that's why I've been fighting everybody else I'm fighting. It's been like this for a long time. You were the only kind of belt holder in the way of Canelo becoming undisputed down at 160. He's just achieved it at 168. Why don't these guys want to get in the ring with you? You know, um, business is good over there so they're like we're not going to mess up business fighting Demetrius Andre because business is no good in if that happens. So I mean at the end of the day um, Either way, you know, everybody's it's prize fighting. They're, everybody's getting paid the most when it comes to fighting me and me fighting them. So, I mean, that's that's what we're in it for. Is that and also legacy and also to see really who is the best guys out there as far as one champion. I mean, it, you know, at the end of the day, I can only control what I can control. And so far, you know, with Canelo doing what he's doing and everybody else is doing what they're doing, there's going to be a time and point where it's like, all right, there is no Canelo. It's only Triple G. It's only Charlo. It's only Romada. It's only us. Like, if Canelo retires tomorrow, what are we going to do? Are we finally going to fight now he's out the way? You know? So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just like we got to... Everybody just got to bite down and make, make make these fights happen with or without Canelo. It's not about Canelo. It's about me. It's about Chalo. It's about Triple G. It's about us being able to get in the ring and making them fights happen. And, of course, we're going to get paid a lot of money as well. But, listen, whatever whatever they got to do to get their guy to feel whatever they, he needs to feel. But Andy Lee is not going to make a difference. There ain't nobody going to make a difference. So, I mean... Like I said, whatever it takes for his confidence to be boost, but it will be shut down come action time. Talking about his disappointment and not being able to get you the big fight. And he just continued to express his frustration. He's like, it's not due to a lack of me trying, and it's not due to a lack of Demetrius wanting these fights. How frustrating is it for you? I know you hear this enough, but it's like, when does it get to the point where you're just like, I don't give a you know what, and I'm just gonna continue to do my thing. Point of time, you know, they're gonna have to wanna be like, yo, we need to force this thing to happen. If it should happen, if it doesn't, then you know what? I, at least I can say it. I went to everybody's door and try to make it happen. So, you know, there is a real boogeyman.
up for a hot and all.